Hello everyone, uh, welcome uh, to my stream. I'm George, you can't see me there, of course. Or can you? Can you? Yeah. Hello, I'm George. Um, you can find me as uh, Volcero in various Amiga forums. Always this intro is sucks for me. Uh, I can't uh, think what should I say and I say all the time the same thing. So yeah, let me welcome you all. Sorry for the long wait, uh, but I had some um, uh, issues with uh, the connection to the internet on my uh, Python through the Wi-Fi device, but right now it's working. It seems to work just fine. Let me check it. Uh, yes. And logically, we can have some music at the background. Like that. Yes. Uh, how are you doing, guys? Welcome, Chitu. Welcome, Falcon 11. Lo welcome, uh, Javier, although you had to run out. Uh, catch you later. Um, thanks everyone for being here. Today is uh, Classic Amiga Day. It's uh, the Friday streams and uh, we are talking again about the Pi Store. Uh, last week I told you that I'm going to show you some uh, applications but unfortunately I didn't have time to get prepared about that but I prepared a few other things to show you and then we can see uh, some more game. Um, Situ says uh, there was a mod player on Classic that uh, lets you hear the samples that were included in the mod and even play them back at a different frequencies. Do you know which one uh, is it? I think you are talking about the Optimal Studio, Optimal Studio. but I think even the um, all the trackers they that uh, were available for um, Amiga had such uh, features. Okay. Oh. Cool. Great. So the music is fine. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I was on uh, the Imp uh, 3 and uh, the developer. Juan uh, sent me the beta. I had some discussion here where he proposed to, to test the beta. So if you are fine with that, let's do that. So I downloaded a new beta version here. I haven't run it, so I don't know what to expect. Uh, George, do you use Wi-Fi Pi device? Yes. At this moment, I'm using I'm uh, uh, online connected using a Wi-Fi Pi device. Today, uh, other times, um, whenever I open my Amiga, it connects f straight to the to the internet. But today, it was uh, stubborn. I was trying to to connect for 20 minutes, <laughs> and uh, just a, a few minutes uh, before I start the stream. Um, it uh, decided to, to work just fine. Uh, sometimes you need to go and click uh, connect uh, a few times to make it work. But this uh, this might have to do uh, with the router and not the, um, the actual hardware of the Amiga. Uh, so let's see the IMP3 beta. As I said, I haven't run it. I don't know what to expect. So let's see how what it does. Um, Juan said that there is a new button called Imp Boy. This one. Let me also put some music. So this one loads an image. Okay, maybe this is uh, some kind of um, 
image viewer inside the imp let's see I might broke it already Falcon how have you been long time no see eh Okay, it flashes because I'm, I did a lot of changes. Um, so let's give it some time. Yeah, I think it has to do with the images. Um, as you know, through the uh, chat, users can uh, share uh, many different files. You can even share a binary and uh, download it. So, and also you might be able to share screenshots. So, let's see if I click here and I click on Inventory. Yes, that's what it does. It shows screenshot. So, uh, let me. Here, uh, an image. There are some buttons on it at the top, which are this one. If you click it, it doesn't do anything. All right, so okay, uh, auto manual and random. Let's say auto. Okay, if I click this one the first. Wait. And okay, it made it crazy. Okay. If I click it again, we have color back. If I click the F, stretches it to the window. Yes. If I click this one, like it is like a no. Moves the tethering. Hey, I said the snake. Welcome to the music to the stream. <laughs> so, and if I click this one, which is like uh, preferences, ah, it has a uh, grayscale fill window and tether uh, as choices, like the buttons that we saw at the top. And this is for getting back. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, someone just shared a new image here, a new uh, screenshot, a photo, and this appeared on the imp boy automatically without me uh, checking on anything. So I guess. Imp boy is uh, this uh, screen, uh, this window is about uh, people sharing uh, screens uh, th on the chat and then this appears automatically on your screen, which is great and uh, a little bit of scary. <laughs> So I didn't uh, plan to, to show you these guys, uh, but it came out of uh, the blue, so yeah, it was a good uh, thing to check out, I guess. 
Uh, C2 says, George, we don't hear you that well. Lotus is a bit loud. Okay, let me refuse it. How about now? Uh, I think it's too much. How about now? And um, SLT Snake says, I didn't break the stream this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yet. You didn't break it yet. So, um, so yeah, that, that is a good addition uh, to the IMP uh, application. I think the, the screen that I open here is 8-bit, that's why we have that uh, image not so um, rendered so well. Uh, because I reduced the um, uh, bit plane for this uh, screen. I guess if we... Um, let me try and change it. Color screen. Let me see the, the one that is better to use. Uh, 720p, 32 bit, let's say. Okay. The result is pretty much the same, unless if the photo was like that. Okay, so let's continue with the other stuff that I would like to show you. Uh, first of all, uh, if you are a regular visitor of this uh, stream, you remember me saying that uh, I would like to have uh, for this PyStorm Amiga a way to have the hard disk light uh, flashing. And uh, today I will show you how I managed to do it. This uh, involves, uh, involves uh, some uh, kind of uh, hardware. I would like to mention here that I am not uh, in any way affiliated with the, this hardware, the producer of the hardware or the um, shop that uh, sells them. They didn't send it to me uh, to, to show it to you. This is something that I found and I would like to show you how you can make this uh, light um, sign whenever you access your um, hard disk. So, let me start again the imp. Actually no, because we are going to open the, the Amiga. So, uh, recently I found that um, Retro Passion has a, in UK, they have a hardware, let me show you that, um, which is this one, it's pretty small, and this goes and connect on the um, power, uh, the floppy power and the uh, LEDs connection in uh, Amiga 1200. Uh, it's a little bit blurry. Let me see how, over here, yes. And as you can see, there are two pin headers here where you can connect uh, from your um, um, Raspberry Pi a cable and those, uh, help, uh, those uh, show the uh, activity uh, on the LEDs in uh, at the LEDs of the Amiga case. One is for floppy and the other is for hard disk. You can connect anything uh, you want. So I would like to do that uh, with you uh, right now and see how this is working. Hardware add-ons, yes, yeah, we have some some of that in these uh, streams. Uh, Hard, Falcon says yes, hard disk drive LED adapter. And not only that, it uh, actually has, um, of course you can't see that, but you can trust me or we can see it when it signs. It has three different LEDs on the board. So you can have LED activity when you have your uh, Amiga uh, open. And um, 
let me show you here right now um, as I said I found it on uh, at uh, Retro Passion I think that is also uh, at the website of uh, Alinea in Germany but uh, the time that I bought it it was out of stock so I don't know if they have it that's the the board uh, over here it has three different uh, LEDs so if you have open uh, from DJ Base let me see uh, maybe yeah at the bottom it has uh, some information and it says Mat Matthias Mads Moon Mads yeah 2023 amigaworld.de so let's check this out Yeah, I think that guy has made uh, a lot of hardware add-ons and um, hardware he has a lot of uh, projects out there so yeah that's the one that's the one so it has as you can see two pins at the side one is Exactly, Falcon. Probably I butchered uh, his name, but that's the one. That's the uh, creator of this uh, hardware. SLD Snake says, I tried soldering a cable on the Pi and then a pin connected to the ID port, but the LED is always on with that. You connected it from the Pi, connected to the ID port. Ah, I see. Yeah, I don't know the magic behind this hardware, to be honest with you. The thing is that um, you don't need, when you have that board, you don't need to desolder anything from the, from the Amiga uh, 1200. So uh, what I understand is it takes both of the signals. If I had uh, a hard disk at the ID and that was flashing, I would uh, also see it's flashing on my uh, LEDs on the at the at the case, so it you can have both world, worlds uh, working just fine at the same time, and that is uh, pretty good. So I found it at the Retro Passion, um, and uh, all it needs is a cable, as you can see here. This is a I don't know if I can uh, make it bigger. Let me see. Yes, this is the uh, Raspberry Pi, and here it is um, uh, one of the tester uh, points, test points, and that is connected with the LED. And then you can connect it to this board, which I'm going to do right now. Live in front of you. Uh, and break my Amiga. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to break it this time. So, and that is one of the hardware that I was looking for a long time to, to add. And let me disconnect all the stuff. And let, let me also bring you a little bit closer to what I am doing I know it is not optimal but that's all I have right now so yes so what I'm going to do is to take this this one as you can see I already soldered this uh, point with a cable that came with the uh, hardware so what I'm trying to do is to connect it here, simply like that, and I would like to connect it on the hard disk LED, like this, and that's all. I think that everyone can do that, 
I don't know of course about the the soldering here but the rest of it is pretty much uh, is it is pretty easy so let's see if I open uh, I start my Amiga right now and you can see the flashing lights over here at the board and uh, you can see that whenever it flashes here we have the flash uh, over there as well and when I close the the case and connect of course the LEDs of the case here they are going to flash I guess so I'm going to sh shut down the Amiga put you at the top and let me do this one so the, the cost of this is not that big it's around 13 uh, euros but unfortunately because it was coming it is coming from uh, UK uh, the shipping was almost the double of it uh, with the customs that I needed to pay so have that in mind and let's see how it goes now so we have here flashing and right now I'm going to be able to see my Amiga when it boots just fine as you can see it works great uh, I said this snake leads leads everywhere <laughs> yeah um, I might need uh, at some point to add a solace in this uh, pie storm maybe and we will have uh, more uh, leads Falcon 11 says if someone wants won't see this uh, revision then here the revision which revision let's see that I'm curious That's uh, a way to connect it when you have a CM4 SLD Snake, uh, Falcon. Hey Retro Modernist, welcome to the stream. With traitors. <laughs> you mean uh, the UK traitors about the Brexit? Yeah, I, I, I understand what you mean. So this is this is a different board, I think. So this uh, board here seems a little bit different, and um, and I don't know if it does exactly the same thing but it seems it goes and connect to a CM4 the actually not the CM4 the the board for the Python that you can put a CM4 on there yes cool good good yeah that's a different board I guess it gets a, a activity from this yeah okay From this resistor here I think that's a resistor okay that's a different board yeah yeah if it if it works fine have that in mind guys that things like that are available and if you want to have your Amiga your Pi Storm Amiga with uh, flashing the LEDs you have to at least two solutions over there uh, 
Uh, yeah, that's that's the board, uh, Chitu. Thanks always for reminding me uh, for reminding me the suite to, to see the screens. Falcon Lever says HDD LED revision C. You can already final. Uh, you have already final uh, revision H. Okay. SLD Snake says I need to check the LED thing again for my 600 Python. Yes, I think that uh, having uh, having a way to to see the uh, hard disk activity is uh, crucial, and of course you can even if you want. You can uh, find a way to get the uh, a signal from the PCMCIA and drive it to that uh, pin, uh, the second pin about the the floppy, for example, and you have that flashing whenever you change exchange data with the PCMCIA. Uh, Retro modernist says, why is that connected to R three eighty nine? I don't know. Maybe it takes some uh, power from that, but I guess it shouldn't need that. Maybe that's what I said about PCMCA. I am not sure about it. And I don't know if that uh, forum that uh, uh, Falcon shared, if there is some information about it. I guess if you go there, guys, you can have uh, some uh, more information. But the, the idea here is that there are solutions, 5 volts, okay, there are solutions and uh, if you have such a, an Amiga, you can find it quite useful, I guess. So, let's go back to Amiga. If you remember, uh, in my previous streams, I had that breaking a lot, Th thank you so much SLD Snake about that. <laughs> and. Um, one of the things that uh, was breaking my Amiga was uh, when I was trying to, to use SFS. Uh, after the previous week uh, uh, stream, I went to the uh, PyStorm um, Facebook group. You can find a lot of people there uh, talking about PyStorm, what else? And uh, I asked about that, uh, about the file systems, and everyone said that SFS has problem. Uh, there is al already an issue on GitHub about that, that it is not working well. I think, if I recall correctly, this was opened by Jan, who creates the AmiKit. And everyone uh, proposed to install the PMS. So I thought, great, let's do that uh, installation on the stream. I have um, some space in the SD card and let's do that installation. So, I downloaded the... Um, uh, let's see if I have internet. If I get into... Uh, and connect into internet. Um, but if you go to the... Um, Aminet, there is a package named PFS3AIO. I have that already downloaded and uh, uh, this one PFS3 AIO 3.1 uh, I put the, the version there because I uh, I always whenever I download any file I try to put the version to distinguish the previous and the, the oldest versions. So there are a couple of files in there. You can copy them, uh, both of them into the system and there is a folder named L. Falcon 11, those images have, were from you, uh, were your images, right? Okay, so it works great, right? And you can um, connect other things there. So if you have these 
files here you can install the PFS3 AIO by going to the uh, tools HT toolbox check the partition of the, of the SD card that uh, you have all the partitions the hard disk that you have all the partitions and for me I have here some space left so I'm going to click on new partition click on that and the previous one is SDH3 let me name it SDH4 and going to advanced options I'm going to click here on add update ok and add the new file system which is pretty straightforward you open here it goes automatically to L folder and you click on PFS3 AIO ok and now here we have to add the DOS type for this uh, file system what you need to add is 50 uh, 46 and then leave the, the rest as it is so it should be 50 46 5303 ok click ok we have it here let me double check it yes exactly ok and then go to change for this partition change this to pfs slash 03 change this is crucial because the pfs doesn't support um, block sizes uh, bigger than 1k change this to 512 and that's actually what you need to do actually we need to do one more thing but I'd like first to see an error that is happening so that you can understand what you can uh, what you need to do if you see that error I will add some extra buffers because we have a lot of memory ok save changes to drive and exit so um, let me see something did I click on auto mount uh, change yeah auto mount is checked exit so I'm going to try and reboot and admire here my new flashing LED. <laughs> uh, Falcon 11 says yes, hard disk uh, drive adapter work good. Same I have on Vampire 1200 version 2. Yes, um, that's that's great. That's great. So if everything goes well, we should boot into the workbench. I guess as up in a minute it's going to be there I hope or not or uh, let me retry it Okay, if it doesn't boot, what we do? Go to early startup. Let's see if we can do anything from there. Yes. So we have here the SDH4. Let's disable it. Boot. Uh, Falcon 11, do you have uh, situations like that? Um, where for some reason the system might not boot and you need to disable a partition to make it work again I, uh, for me it happens frequently and uh, I even changed 
the SD card and I still have it like that I, you see it first time yeah maybe it's, it has to do with my system so it booted when I disabled the partition if I reboot now let's see how it goes I might need to do that again for example the I had that uh, Falcon when um, something went wrong with the uh, with a partition the, the the big partition that I have the for the games if for some reason that partition was not um, working well uh, I had the system stuck into this uh, screen I, I never had that before with any of my other Amigas that do not have uh, a Pi Store but uh, with this one yes I have it quite frequently so we know what to do disable the SDH4 boot and logically it will boot again yes and if I try to mount it uh, from the mounter system mounter uh, here mount okay that's the error that I would like to show you you see when it tries to mount it it says it complains about allocated memory doesn't match memory mask okay so even if it auto mounted and you try to format it you will get that error as well so what needs to be done is is it let me doesn't okay so what needs to be done is to go again to the hard disk toolbox and change one more parameter to a specific uh, number and uh, let me show you that now And I think after that it's going to work just fine. So if we go to hard disk toolbox and we select again the hard disk and the partition drive, and we go advanced options, click the partition with the PFS, that's uh, really crucial, and click on change. We have to go here on the mask and add uh, after the X the number 7 and at the end remove e and add f e so it is seven six f's and one e at the end exactly exactly what falcon said um, so if we do that right now and we exit logically if everything goes well we will see the system booting boot and we will see the partition showing up in the um, workbench ready to be formatted like we see there uh, and it is already formatted because I did that yesterday uh, so it is a professional file system 3 19.2 okay the version that we had before let me add so this is right now uh, ready to be used and it works just fine yes let me mount the games partition so um, 
my goal for the for this weekend actually is to uh, this partition, this games partition, which is a huge one. Um, it is almost twenty uh, giga gigabytes uh, to convert it to PFS uh, for many reasons <laughs> uh, and see uh, how fast it is and things like that. SLT Snake says I don't remember setting that mask parameter, but I have just found it written a PFS3 nodes that I have in my hard disk drive. Yeah, I don't remember when I used I used PFS on my other 1200 that has the Blizzard 1230. Uh, if I use that, I might should. The thing is that the documents that have that in, that should have that information. Uh, all documents around PFS are, are um, too old and have different uh, values. That information is uh, shared on uh, the PyStorm repository on GitHub. They, there is documentation um, and some guides. The document that uh, describes how the hard disk setup should be done <coughs> Excuse me. Has that information as well, so it's already there. Uh, but you have to dig a little bit to to find it. Unfortunately, that's why I wanted to to show that here. And um, since we have a PFS and we have some partitions that are based on FFS, I would say if we get online. To find a tool to to measure the, the speed difference to to see if we can see which file system of these are faster on my system if we get online. Don't know if I have anything here. If you would like to me measure the uh, speed of the of your hard disks, which tool would you recommend to, to use? I know that on Aminet there is a disk speed, uh, and I, I but I'm not, I don't know if this is uh, right now the yeah the best uh, tool to, to use, or if there is uh, something uh, newer. I think the problem uh, with uh, your message Falcon is that you wrote a message all in capitals. So uh, please don't do that. <laughs> so if we go to Aminet and search for disk speed. Uh, there is a version 4.2 let me download it here okay do you, are you aware of any other um, uh, tool that you would like me to, to I stayed with this speed for hard disk drive speed but maybe there are other options I'm curious to know yeah, me too. Uh, the the tool that I'm using mostly is uh, disk speed on any uh, operating system because, as you can see, there are versions for Amiga OS 4 and uh, Morphos. The Morphos is the the newest over there. So let's have a look on disk speed. But if you guys have another um, tool that you would like to recommend and uh, try it out, please let me know. Uh, so I'm going to download uh, and let's see if uh, actually there is some kind of difference. Uh, okay. disk speed. Great. So I'm going to compare the system and the storage. The storage is for 
is uh, the PFS. So I'm going to run here and I'm going only to use the basic uh, test. Let me change it to sys and start test. Because uh, actually to do the full test it takes a little bit of time. The disk speed is pretty good, but it has uh, some. Um, some people say that it's not that good to uh, measure the disk um, activity, the disk um, speed, because it uses some casting. I don't know. Okay, so it finished. We have a file created 224 for the file fast file system. File open 2900, directory scan 5334, file delete 4202, and seek and write more than 5006. Let's see the, the storage, which is the PFS. stop test here we have the comparison between these two of course the PFS has a lot more file creation um, files per second file open is pretty much the same directory scan is much faster and file delete the FFS seems to be much faster on that and then seek uh, all read 6 per second again FFS seems to be much faster for that um, so yeah as you can see th I don't know if that's the best way to, to measure all this information of course if you um, let it do the full scan it has much more uh, tests in there and you can see and compare yourself um, which be, uh, which uh, file system it is better to use? Uh, how about you, Falcon Eleven? Which one uh, are you using on your systems? And uh, as we are already in um, the discussion about file systems and all this stuff. And we are in uh, um, Aminet. I would like to show you one more application, Utility. It is called Mnemosyn. This was uh, created by Aris Amiga. Sometimes you have probably seen him in the chat. And uh, now that I want to download it, Aminet is not working. Great. Let's see if we can find another um, mirror. Let's see that. 
going on? I get me okay we got it 1.2.0 so uh, I don't know if you have uh, ever used that uh, utility let's see that now um, it's quite useful So I'm going to copy that here, not like that. Extract, okay. And we have it here. So Mnemosyn is a tool that you can use uh, to, to find in your hard disk uh, yes, Falcon. Yeah, exactly. To try to, to find in uh, hard disk what exactly is taking uh, too much uh, space. Uh, so if I go to games, for example, and uh, retro plays and see in the demos which letter has the most uh, demos, for example, you can click on scan and the, that scans the folder that you gave it and gives you a result, a list of every folder and the sub, uh, of every folder the uh, uh, percentage of the amount that they take in your hard disk and the actual uh, megabytes that they take. So if I click on uh, S for example, it then gets into that folder and checks the rest of the, the files. And that's pretty useful in my opinion. If um, you open a cell here and try Mimo Scene uh, with a path, so I go to games, uh, retro plays, and uh, here I select demos. You will see it gets you get some um, the same information on, at your cell without, of course, being uh, sorted in any way. And uh, you can check the guide because it has a lot of information how this is working and what options you can uh, have, uh, requirements, installation, and um, usage. Let's see that. Wow, it has uh, some fancy uh, screenshots as well. And if you are using the uh, GUI, you can go click on the back here and go to the previous uh, folder. It scans it again and then you can go to another folder, for example, the M. So the, the, in this uh, collection, uh, in demos, the letter M has <laughs> the most of the demos, I guess. It's the more uh, used uh, letter on the name of the, de of the uh, demos. That's pretty cool, in my opinion, and uh, yeah that was created by Aris Amiga. So the next time that you are going to see him at the, at the chat, uh, today he's not here, unfortunately, but the next time you see him, please give him uh, uh, some congrats because he did a, this is his first uh, tool that he created and it's all written in C, which is not an easy thing to do, right? Um, and it is quite useful. So I'm, I'm sure I'm going to use it a lot. After that, what should I show you? Um, 
I played a little bit with this uh, workbench doc and I would like to show you some interesting stuff that I, I discovered by just reading the, the documentation. Yeah, the CLI Falcon is uh, working just fine, so if you don't want to use the GUI, you can uh, use it from CLI and get that information as well. Uh, Retromodernist says should have used the E miles better. Yeah, yeah, probably. E is um, a language that I would like to spend a little bit more time to, to learn as well. Um, it simplifies a lot of things, right? Uh, and at the end, you it generates a C code, if I'm not wrong. Retromodernist says, I did loads using the original compiler, bit D, okay. Uh, SLT Snake, if it's not uh, assembly, I don't know what it is. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Retromodern says not, uh, no, the, the original was straight E object. Okay. Object oriented, you mean? What do you mean, object? Absolutely, I should spend some more time with that. Ah, from the E, you get the binary. You compile the E and you get the binary. Yes, okay. Okay. But I think the, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think E language, what it does is to generate uh, C and then that is compiled. Uh, there was no C substep. Okay. Substep. Okay. I see. I see. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. So I would like to talk to you a little bit about Workbench Doc. And I spent a little bit of time to see how this is working and uh, what exactly you can do with that, except of just have a doc down here uh, at the bottom of the, the screen. So I. I spend some time to read the documentation. I don't know how many of you are doing that, read the documentation of the application, but I'm sure uh, I discovered a, a few things that are I didn't know. For example, in this folder, there is a, a, a hidden uh, directory called apps, which has some interesting stuff, like it has doc apps that you can add on your doc. Interesting. Like this CPU. And I didn't know that you can do that. It has a separator. Like this. Which is great. And it has here a mouse feed. If I add it correctly, like that which measures the, the miles that you burn by using the mouse. So it's it's pretty good. Reto Modern says original compiler did it was very fast. The newer compilers, no, not sure. Okay. Uh, SLD Snakes says I'm going for something for it. Okay, have a good time. I, it was great having you here. And uh, yeah, you can add these dock apps and it has also a switch win, which I don't know how useful it is, but you can click on that and then say, okay, I have I browse, let's open it. And it will bring this window in front of you and then you can say, okay, I browse, let's close it. And you can quit the application. Uh, which is interesting and also it has another directory here which is named SDK which has all the information that you need to create your own doc apps. So
So if you are in development and you would like to have a specific doc app that does something very uh, interesting for the users, like the guy who created this um, uh, calendar, I don't know if you click it, yeah, you have a calendar, which is great, I'm going to use it. Um, you can do it. Of course, the date here and the time is completely wrong, and that's because uh, my system here is not uh, synchronized. But in any way, uh, you can have it. Okay, so I discovered these uh, DOS, uh, DOS, uh, sorry, DOC apps. That's uh, pretty much uh, something that we have in Amiga OS 4 with the Amidoc, uh, with the dockies, that's the way it is called, and you can add uh, different things in uh, your dock, your Amidoc. Um, so I found it quite interesting. But also, I found that you can have uh, sub docs in uh, your dock. So you can click on something and that opens another dock. If you remember, if you watched my uh, stream that I uh, did a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I created this Workbench uh, doc. One of the, the ways you can install Workbench uh, WB doc is by having a, such a file, let me open it, which has a list of uh, applications that you want to have at your doc. And also, if we see the uh, information, it uh, starts as a, pro a default tool, it has the WordPress doc, a WB doc, which you can have uh, whenever, wherever you want. But it also has uh, some tool types, and that is information about how the doc is uh, working. Let me make it bigger, like that. So, if you would like to have another doc that has, um, I don't know, the music applications or the internet applications or something like that, and you can, you would like to have it uh, hidden and um, have that appear only if you click a button on your main uh, doc, you can do it uh, as well. Uh, and let's see how you can do it. So, what you need to do if you have this uh, WB doc is to create a copy. Now, if I let me rename it to music, let's say. If I double, if I leave it here in uh, Workbench Startup, whenever the system starts, it's going to show both um, of these uh, docs. Uh, sorry, uh, WB docs. So uh, I'm going to move it to my WB doc uh, folder. And if you, I click on that, double click on that, it will open at the bottom because actually what I did was to create a, a, a copy of the previous doc, right? So I'm going to remove everything. Let me quit it. like that. I'm going to remove everything and I will add here the, I have the imp3. Okay, that was a long shot. Uh, let me get that path. So if I go new cell, I can take that path from here. Copy paste in three. Great. So I have here my first application. As you can see here, it is in three. So let me change it a little bit. So the style, I will like the magic WB. It is different. And I would like it to be at the right here. And I would like that to have a, uh, that's all for now, that's enough. Save settings, and what it does when you save settings is to update the tool types of this icon. 
of this uh, music. Okay, it updates these uh, two types. And let me double click on that again. And this is going to remove the uh, doc, the WB doc. And now, if I go and drag this here, for example, the icon is there. And if I click on that, it will show the the new doc. And if I click again, it will uh, hide the new doc. Actually, what it does is because this has a default tool, the WB doc, what uh, that method that imitates to have sub docs, uh, that method uh, executes that uh, application again, and uh, the second time you execute that, it hides the doc. And that's a way that you could uh, have multiple different uh, uh, docs here and click on them. For example, you can have an internet uh, doc, um, doc uh, development doc, and things like that. So you click on here and that appears where you, you would like. And then you can start your um, application. Uh, of course, as you have seen here, it takes the icon of the, the the one that I'm using here. So if I go and take another icon, uh, I don't know, let me find something. Uh, let's say this one. And replace it. And restart the main dock. I didn't save it. So I have it here. As you can see, it is going to take the same icon. Save settings, and I think you need save config as well. Let me remove it from here, from the Volkswagen setup. So this way, you can have multiple different uh, docs, uh, which you can open based on what you want to do. Um, and uh, what else? I have seen... Uh, that's one thing that I would like to test sometime. Uh, when you have uh, multiple, multiple devices, for example, something like... Uh, where is it? Devs? Those drivers, something like that. Okay, I have one which is storage, uh, those drivers, that's the one I think. Let me check. No. Okay, let's say that you have a, a CD, uh, those driver. You can have that on your uh, desktop, uh, sorry, on your dock. And uh, because it understands that it's a DOS driver, um, it adds uh, on your uh, left, um, sorry, the right click button like that. It adds here in the menu, uh, eject and unmount of the um, specific uh, uh, device. This is uh, interesting in case you have CD-ROMs, for example, um, so you can make it uh, eject the CD uh, and things like that, which is which is pretty good, in my opinion. And there are other uh, also options to make uh, the uh, dock uh, transparent, pseudo transparent. Uh, I think if I go to here and check the tool types again, um, there is Smart Press.
there is this transparency but I think that this one is used by a specific uh, style which is this one this style here let's see the documentation uh, transparency transparency the transparency of the platter of the funny style between 0 and 100 this one here and as you can see it leaves also some space from the bottom so this one the space uh, you can set the space as well if you want the bar to not touch the bottom but you want to, it to be a little bit higher that's uh, possible as well but I think I saw somewhere um, another transparency uh, another thing that is really uh, interesting is this limit uh, um, option that uh, sets the number of icons per row so if you have um, let's say a vertical uh, dock that has 20 uh, items and that doesn't uh, fit in your screen you can make it uh, and say I want every row to have five uh, icons so it uh, splits the icons in your dock in multiple rows and it's better for you to, to have that uh, fitting and about the auto height, yes uh, let me show you something that If I click here on, and it opens at the side, um, the first time, the, the first day that I uh, installed the dock uh, here on stream, I checked if the this dock can be um, enable the height, auto height the dock. But I had that on the left side and this didn't work so now if you have it at the right <laughs> this is working just fine so you can have uh, a hidden dock at the right like that and of course you can have the drag bar enabled like this and you can move it wherever you want and save the position if you want Thank you so much, Retro Modernist, for being here. Have a good evening. So that's a few things that I uh, I found about uh, WB Doc. It has a lot of uh, interesting features, um, and that I, I saw all this stuff by reading the documentation. Um, it has a lot of uh, features that are not available. Um, in any of the menus here so it's a, you could say that they are a little bit uh, hidden but in my opinion if you guys I don't know if you read uh, docu documents uh, documentation of applications and things like that um, from my experience um, people tend to not read them at all uh, that's why we need to make the application sans intuitive as possible uh, but if you have an application and you use it uh, please read the documentation because there are uh, most of the times there is a lot of information that it might not be available and uh, that's uh, also something that is a, a payback for the developer because he spent time to, to write the documentation right Yeah, the, the WB Doc is pretty cool. It has features that the on, the older Ami Doc didn't have. So I think it's it's good to, to spend some time with that. And have it installed on your um, uh, system. So after that, those are the tools that I would like to talk about. 
after all this uh, I would like to spend a little bit more time to check the games that are not working if you remember we saw this list of games and some of them were not working at all so I would like to spend some more time with them and make them and fix them and make them work for example the Diablo had some issue with uh, when I was going in uh, uh, full screen so let's see if we can make it work better so let's see if I open here the Diablo in E full screen is zero and if I run it it was working uh, I think you should have some sound right now It was working on window mode, but not on full screen. The Diablo, uh, the, the engine for Diablo was never actually open source. This is based on an open source uh, uh, code that was um, actually reverse engineered the, the way that the Diablo is working. Um, and that was named Evolution X. And um, the first time that I heard about it was um, when some developers try to, to port it to um, vampire systems. But uh, right now it is available for uh, Amiga OS 3, Amiga OS 4 and uh, Morphos. So let's see, does it work if I create a new hero which I will name cancel, new hero, can I name? It's going to be a warrior. His name is Volquero. I, I just want to see if that is going to to, to yeah, it crashed. For some reason, it crashed. So my system, something is missing. How can, can I find what is missing? That's a good question. Let me mount it. Unless it's not missing anything, but it needs some more um, stack. Now, as you can see, it takes a lot of time to mount the partition, and that's probably because the partition is, um, let's say, broken at some point. Um, I hope not broken completely. <laughs> so let's see how much time it will take. And that's the reason why when I had that uh, partition as auto-mounted and something like that happened, uh, my system didn't boot at all. Because actually what it was uh, trying is to to make the, uh, to mount the partition, but it takes a lot of time. Maybe if I change it to PFS, I won't have uh, such issues. Maybe. And because it is a huge partition, I would better change it to something else. And I 
actually the, the whole system is unusable right now so I can't do much things uh, Falcon 11 says I will try the same with Diablo if you want but I have caffeine Python the collection of the games that you saw earlier for the RTG games are coming from the caffeine um, I copied those games here because uh, they include uh, all the necessary inf uh, uh, files to run the game and I think that it works just fine in caffeine um, distribution the reason why I have them here and uh, the reason why I show that in such a way even if they break is uh, to have some discussion on how to make all this stuff uh, understand how they are working for example it was taking so much time right now to, to have the games mounted and to have a discussion why this is happening what can we do uh, is it something that uh, we can fix if the Diablo starts playing and uh, it crashes what might be the, the reason for that um, So this helps, in my opinion, a lot to understand how this uh, uh, operating system is working, right? So as I can see, the Diablo is loading is a, a, an icon that uh, loads Icon X. It uses the Icon X tool, um, and that has a small uh, stack size. Usually, when you have an Icon X, that means that this file is not a binary but a script so if I open that in text edit I can see here the uh, the commands that it runs and I can see here it has for some reason that line um, commanded out maybe the author of the caffeine is using some other kind of uh, tool to increase the stack so let me open that here and say ok stack 500,000 ok and then say devolution x v1.4 minus minus diablo and see if that uh, works better so uh, Falcon, the, the point of this uh, streams and what I'm doing is actually to understand how things are working it might break again it might never work but at least this uh, discussion that we are going to have is uh, for me crucial for people who would like to understand how things are working and for me actually to, to understand why this is failing and how to make it work the, re the thing is that the game uh, started just fine but it crashed at some point usually this is either because uh, it uh, expects some libraries that are missing um, for example uh, 3D Word 3D or something like that or because the stack uh, is not enough uh, Falcon says I ran it and I created my profile. Everything okay? Yes. Yeah, I think in Cafe OS is working fine. So I have here Volcaro normal. Let's see if that crashes again. I expect that it will crash, but let's see. It didn't crash. So the problem is actually uh, stuck. So what I would do for my system is to have the stack uh, command again uh, um, enabled in this script. Probably the author of the cafe in OS has a, a patch that increases the stack or has a default stack for every application. 
so the game seems to run just fine I don't know if I increase the resolution how it will work but right now it's, uh, it's working really fast What ails you, my friend? Even my skills have been unable to fully heal Farnham. Oh, I have been able to mend his Falcon body, 11 says we can uh, use stack attack, yes. Beyond anything yeah. I can do. Let's see if I can, if I increase the, if I quit the game, okay, and here I go and increase the, uh, enable the stack, save, and click on that, it should work okay, and I would like to see if I can increase the resolution, or is this something that has to be set uh, as an uh, settings resolution here and then we have full screen let me see the resolution first okay doesn't seem to let me let's go full screen okay Some FPS. Okay. Exit. It seems that the full screen is working now. Uh, Falcon Eleven says you have OS three. 2.2.1 and there can be problem with stack on my blizzard ppc with the same uh, os i use stack attack and it seems that everything is fine yeah yeah um i don't remember if i used that specific the stack attack or something else because there is uh, also an issue with the much user interface applications especially uh, some of them uh, need more than 8k of uh, stack and when you start the magic user interface uh, applications the, you see a window that complains about the amount of the stack I, I am not sure if I use the stack attack but this is a good uh, uh, tool Okay, it runs with uh, 38 FPS right now. Can't a fellow drink in peace? No one ever listen, listens to me. Somewhere, I ain't too sure, but somewhere out of the church. Falcon says, yes, magic user interface had problems, so it's 3.2 must be minimum 32 kilobytes. Yes. Just wait for someone to get it. Okay, so... Let's see if we go and do some fighting. How fast it works. But it, it is pretty fast. I see 45 FPS. It is pretty good. Please listen to me. The Archbishop Lazarus. He led us down here to find the lost prince. Bastard led us into a trap. Now it the sanctity of this place has been fouled.
Yeah, it works just fine. Cool. One fixed, more to go. Uh, let me see this also, the Hellfire, if it has the same. Yes. Save. And that's ready. Let's see what else is not working. I think some of these games were complaining about the... Um, let me see this one. RTG Master Library, version 14. Okay, if I'm not wrong, this is available on Aminet. RTG Master. Oh, we are not online. Okay. C277 works great. One more great game for Python. Yeah. Diablo is uh, one of the games that if I go and start playing, it is difficult to stop. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you played it either, but it works quite well. And um, it's a pleasure to have that game in these uh, machines. I don't know why this is so difficult to connect today. Actually, when I was uh, investigating that earlier, the Wi-Fi Pi device seemed, and the wireless manager seemed to uh, connect to my router, but when the roadshow tries to connect, it fails for some reason. Maybe I need to do some investigation in the net interface. DHCP. I don't know if the problem is the DHCP or or something. Uh, Falcon, are you using uh, Wi-Fi Pi or not on your systems?
Yes, Wi-Fi Pi, but with Miami. I'm still online, but sometimes after reboot is problem to connect. Hmm. Yeah, it might be a problem with the DHCP actually. Task mask, red mask DHCP, which has the effect of asking the DHCP to actually. Let me try something. One point ninety. Let's say. Okay. Yes, okay. Um. Hmm. Okay, it's not working. For me, uh, it is sometimes difficult to connect, but if it does, it, it works great after that. Uh, Falcon 11 says, I have to try install my full version of Roadshow, I only test my new PyStorm CM4, I have in two weeks, oh, only two weeks. Are you happy with that? I guess the uh, speed uh, differences, it might be huge, right? And uh, I believe it fits better in uh, your 1200. Because you don't have the whole uh, Pi store, uh, sorry, Raspberry Pi in the you have just a small CM4 compute module which, lo which looks great it looks great eh? <laughs> yeah We are in. Let me mount again the games. Okay, and let me go here. Inserts RPG Master. And uh, there are a few. Let me. Hmm. I th I think that's the one we need to try. From 1998, new, new stuff. Uh, let me download it. Downloads, Mark G Master. Version 42, okay. Applications, internet, downloads, like that. Okay. 
okay and uh, this is here I do it all the time ah uh, Okay, run. Add it to master. Create. Okay, extract. Blazing fast. Okay, if you know me, I don't want to. I don't like doing uh, installations with uh, installers if I have. If I'm not quite sure what it is doing, so I'm going to give it a. Uh, a check first so we have here some goodies yes we have here some libraries RTG, ok and it has a library for Picasso 96 Pictures. Ooh, some pictures. Nice. Okay. Let's. And it has some demo. So after we install it, we can. Um. So before I continue, if you are like me and you would like to know what exactly is going to happen when you do an installation when you use the installer like that there is an option that says pretend to install and uh, log file log all actions to a file that runs all the installation all the process and logs all the, the data into a file that you can check afterwards um, this helps to understand if something uh, is going to be overwritten while you don't want it to happen and where exactly put any uh, data and any files uh, in your system for now I'm going to go with install for real do you want to delete any old versions this is recommended if old versions did not run on your system. Uh, currently installed RTG master library is version 0. Ok. Update. Sub libraries. Do you wish to install the needed sub libraries? Yes. And it understands that we use Picasso, I guess. Do we need all the stuff? RTG, AMI, maybe that's for the native. Uh, Amica Guide and uh, RTG Master Demos. Proceed. A directory called RTG Master User will be created. Okay, let me install it here. Uh, the C2P, Chucky to Planner. Algorithms are needed for ECS Saga. Do you wish to install them? Um, hmm, let's do it. You should reboot now. Oh, no. Check your devs monitors directory if you have installed a monitor driver there. Graphics board users always have something installed there. Okay, let's see. Devs monitors. installed there. ECS Aga users not always. If you are an ECS uh, Aga user and you uh, do not have something installed there, please copy PAL or NETSCAN from SIS. Ok, proceed. Installation complete. RTG Master can be found in your application utilities. Ok. Right now I'm not going to do a, a, a reboot and test a, one of the demos. How bad can it go? Let's say the flame. Okay. Let's see. Let's go with 
640480 Use It seems to work Okay, and The system crashed Great! Um, Falcon Leather says, and is fast, my Blizzard PPC is my best The Pystorm is fast, yeah, yeah y Your Blizzard PPC, um, does it have an 060 or an 040? Let's try now the alien print. Will it work? Okay, we have a few resolutions here. Hmm. Will it work with uh, this one? Use. A little bit broken. Checking what this script is doing, and it says if board name equal to v4 firebat. I guess all this stuff are for uh, vampire systems. Else, if that's it, lab uh, v4. Else, okay. So if I go here, new cell. And I do uh, assign SFX here. TKG1. TKG1. And 2. And then for us is TKG. TKG. RPG like that so if I go here and select this one use use ok, a little bit bigger these are still broken for some reason so fast that you can't, can't even see the bullet Check a little bit this. Okay, those are the keys. Screen copy. Main 
in scale mode 320 to, to 560 I wonder why the letters are broken There are different versions of the game for the system. Let's try the TKG. TKG. Maybe that needs uh, the native output. You need RTG Master, Archi and 18 megabytes RAM minimum. And on a Cyberstorm uh, with a CyberVision 3D setup, it can apparently get 24 FPS. Yeah, it seems that broke again for some reason. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's continue with the, the uh, setup here. Falcon Level says Blizzard 603E Plus. That's with the SCSI, right? Wow, uh, 210 megahertz for the PPC and 060 at 50 megahertz. That's awesome, Falcon. That's a great system you have there. Have you tried to overclock the 060? I wouldn't recommend it. Absolutely not. Uh, I don't like to overclock my systems, especially this kind of systems that are too delicate and uh, really uh, hard to find and uh, expensive. Could it also be a stack, a stack problem? Stack. I don't think it needs so much, but let, let's give it some. Okay. Maybe when I copied the files, something was not copied quite well and broke the...
unfortunately it doesn't work quite well for me actually the game works but the menu is uh, broken so I don't know if that is an older version that fails this is from 1997 about the alien breed uh, killing ground there is a newer version that uh, a guy is working right and uh, I would recommend to, to use that one because it's much faster Falcon 11 says no 50 MHz is default and I will leave it so no overclock and I agree with you uh, the other time we tried the genetic species but it was running with the from the native let's see if I can make it work on the uh, RTG right now device external is not assigned or a file is missing ok what file let's see I have snoop dos and if I click on retry what exactly is looking for external true genetic 24 bit ok is that here actually to find it first I will pause then I will click here uh, sorry I said pause no, disable ok and I will search uh, search from this folder Okay. With whose name contains true genetic. Actually, the name should be exact. True genetic dot twenty four bit. So this file is not here, the external is something else. Uh, the external here it's maybe it's a um, partition that exists in the uh, cafe in OS which I don't have here. Cancel and I don't have this file. If I change it to 24 bit but whose name contains that there's nothing with that ok I don't think I can do much with that so next one quick uh, select the 640 48 8 bit cyber graphics and DACA ok cyber graphics quake is working as it seems wow 
That's fast. See, does it have a free look? Uh, screen size, more speed, customized controls, uh, mouse look. Back. That's on a higher resolution, I guess, right now. probably it uh, cloned the workbench resolution so it is uh, 720p which if it works that will be great I'm curious to see how many frames per second it will have right now in that uh, with that resolution. Almost 12 uh, frames per second. Not bad. Of course, if you want to, to play as good as possible, it should be uh, more than 25 frames per second, but that's not bad. I guess with a uh, CM4 it's, it will be much faster.
not that bad, to be honest. Falcon Level says I do the same like you and benchmark I have uh, in 60, 640 to 400. T have you tried the Alliance Quake? No, actually I haven't. Let me see that. A quake, Alliance Quake. At least this version has a mouse, a mouse look enabled. Maybe high resolution needed here. a little bit there. So it has video options. Let me go a little bit higher and also let me change customize controls. Attack mouse one. resolution change, I think it does it. No, I don't think it does. Okay, it says something. Press enter to set mode. D to make the default. Current default is... Okay. 
let's make this one the default escape to exit and then I need to quit to make it happen This is really crazy fast. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, it is really nice. Falcon Level says uh, it's not my favorite game FPS. I like strategy games. Settlers on Amiga is the best. I agree, Settlers is great. It's a great game. Um, By actually, the FPS is my type of uh, games. I like playing FPS a lot. Um, that's my favorite uh, genre. And uh, yeah, the other time we have seen the Dark Forces. Let's see the Hydra CL. That's a very nice uh, platform game that is ported from uh, other different uh, systems. And I think that this is based on SD, if I'm not wrong. If you like this kind of games, I totally recommend it to try this out. It's great fun. So you need this axe to be able to, to break some of the stones that can be found on your way.
Strife, we checked that the last time it is working. I think that Napalm. Oh, F2140. Let's try, try that now. See if there is any reason why it fails. Okay, right now it doesn't work because the sound channels were uh, reserved. Let's do a restart. Yeah, let's see if now, after the restart, if we get into the Snoop Dogg's any information why it uh, doesn't start the game. Uh, so I'm going to start Snoop Dogg's as well. And the, let's see the 800. Nothing is failing, maybe it is taking a lot of time to load the samples. I don't know. How big are these samples? Because I don't see any activity on the hard disk. There are more than 1.5 uh, megabytes, okay. Yeah, from the Snoop Dogg's, it, it, sorry, you don't see anything. Okay, from the Snoop Dogg's, it doesn't seem to, to load. Hello, JerkB27, thank you for the follow. Yeah, this seems to, to stack, uh, stack somewhere. Anyway, um, I think that's enough for today, for this stream. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, next time I plan to, to have, a, to be more prepared about the applications and run a few applications like the uh, Deluxe Paint and the uh, Lightwave or Cinema 4D. Um, on PyStorm and see how they are working. Uh, I don't know if I should bring them into my installation or try out the Caffeine OS that has all these applications there and just try them and see how they are working. Uh, let me think about that and maybe I can come up with an idea uh, or please let me know what you prefer. Um, so that's it for today. Thanks everyone for being uh, in this stream. Thank you Falcon for being here and uh, for all your help. Uh, C277, thanks for being here. SLT Snake, thank you. Um, everyone in the chat, thank you for being here and uh, spend your time with me to today. I hope that uh, it was uh, interesting for you. And um, I would like to ask you that if it is interesting and if you find those streams uh, useful, uh, share them with your friends, uh, with your Amiga friends and uh, let them know that we are running those streams here and uh, we are playing with uh, the PyStorm and the Amiga and the Amiga OS. Um, so my next stream is going to be this Tuesday uh, which is uh, Amiga OS for Gaming Night and the next um, Friday again with uh, the Python uh, we will see some applications this, this time um, and um, 
I would like to let you know about the blog that I have, which is at the coffee.com slash Volcaro. You can find there information about the applications that I'm developing and all the stuff that I'm doing for the Amiga OS uh, community. Uh, for example, today I released a newer version of the LightXL um, editor, which is available for the Morphos and the Amiga OS 4 uh, users. So if you are one of them and you do some development, you might like to, to have a look on that. And um, also let me thank my monthly supporters, who are uh, Breed, Christopher White, Daniel Cedlika, Emek, Livelord and Tim Grooms. And thank you all again for being here. And let's have a look if there is anyone who is streaming anything about Amiga OS. Uh, or games for Amiga and give them a raid. Let's see who's online. Who's here? Hmm. Actually, I see that uh, the old man that games plays some uh, games, but they, they are not uh, for Amiga. But uh, it will be good to have uh, to give him a raid and uh, have a look on what he is playing right now. And um, again, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. Have a great, great weekend, and see you all next time. Bye bye.